So at this point in my scientific career, I've probably done thousands of DNA extractions in the lab, but I've never done one in my house before. This should be interesting. I'm Molly and I'm a scientist and usually on this channel I'm visiting the labs of other scientists to do experiments together and learn about their research. But right now, like many of you, I'm at home doing my part to flatten the curve of the coronavirus. My own lab is closed and I definitely can't be traveling around visiting all of my scientist friends. But that's okay, there's still so much science that we can do and learn at home and I'm really excited to share some of that with you in our next few episodes. I study plant genetics, which all starts with DNA. So today I'm going to show you how to extract DNA from strawberries using items that you probably have lying around your house. DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, is a super special molecule found in all of our cells that contains the instruction manual on how to be you. Written into DNA are genes that make these strawberries red and juicy and delicious, or your eyes blue and also juicy and delicious. Anyway, here's what you'll need for the experiment. Strawberries, just one is fine. A plastic bag, a mixture of one third cup water, two teaspoons dish soap, and a quarter teaspoon salt, another glass and a mesh strainer or coffee filter, and some isopropanol, AKA rubbing alcohol, that's been in your freezer for a few hours to get nice and cold. In order to study genes, scientists have to be able to separate or extract DNA from all of the other stuff in our cells. So the chemicals we're using today will help us do that. Strawberries are also great for DNA extractions because they have eight copies of their genes in each cell, so we're guaranteed to get a lot. We, on the other hand, only have two. Other fruits that you can mash up easily, like bananas or kiwis, will also work well if you don't have strawberries on hand. Okay, so there are several barriers between us and the strawberry DNA. The first is the cell wall. Plant cells are surrounded by a wall made up of a super strong molecule called cellulose. It's stronger than steel. We're gonna break the cell walls by putting the strawberry in a bag and mashing it up. Oh, that's really satisfying. <laughs> Can you see that? We did it. Cool, okay. Right underneath the cell wall is the cell membrane. The DNA is housed in the cell's nucleus, which is also surrounded by a membrane. Membranes are made of molecules called phospholipids, which are similar in structure to fats. And what breaks down fats? Soap. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, that smells so nice. When I do DNA extractions in the lab, they don't smell this good. Mm. Okay, so we're going to add our soap mixture to the bag to help blast through those membranes and release our DNA. The DNA is also tangled up with a bunch of proteins and the salt in the mixture will help separate them. And make sure it's mixed up, <laughs> mixed up nice and good. Bleh, bleh, bleh. Goodbye membranes. DNA be free. The coronavirus is also surrounded by a membrane, which is why washing our hands with soap for 20 seconds is a really good way to get rid of it. Next, we wanna filter out all of our cell walls and debris, so we're gonna put our solution through our strainer or coffee filter. Oh, it still smells really nice. Great. Okay. Ah! <laughs> okay, what's happening? Yuck. Ooh, ooh, shoot. That's scary. Science in real life. <gasps> Look how pretty it is. Ooh, could make a nice little uh, DNA cocktail. So I have all of my debris in here and then a nice clear solution that's come through. So now it's time to separate the DNA from everything else. DNA really hates alcohol. So it's time to grab our cold isopropanol and add one teaspoon to the mix. The DNA molecules will rush to stick to each other because they're all friends, and if they're all stuck together, then fewer of them have to touch the alcohol. Ah! Okay, I'm gonna swirl it around with the chopstick of science. Oh my God, there it is. <laughs> I had to add some more alcohol. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, can you see it? That slime is strawberry DNA. <laughs> there it is. Okay, so just add alcohol until you see slime. <laughs> so 
So what I just did here in my living room isn't actually that different from how we extract DNA in the lab. We just use fancier chemicals and test tubes and add some purification steps to make sure that our DNA samples aren't contaminated. If you want to see what that looks like, you can watch our first ever episode of Science in Real Life. We'll be doing more episodes of At Home Science, so don't forget to subscribe. If you want to see cool things that scientists do with DNA after they've extracted it, you can meet Dr. Katie Heath, who studies how plants and soil bacteria get along, or Dr. Michelle Heck, who's working on a cure for citrus greening disease. Enjoy and see you next time. Ooh, I can eat you now. <laughs>